This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you want to set up your own slick looking website or online store. Do you remember a time when it was all about Canicon? It's all about Con or Sonnen these days. And with the R5 and now this, the Alpha 1, war has very much been declared. Okay, first of all, naming convention. Alpha isn't a Sony thing, it's a Minolta thing. Alpha 7 and Alpha 9 were names used for Minolta SLRs. And like Sony, the A9 was the pro-grade camera and the A7 was supposed to be slightly lower. Then as the number gets smaller, the more entry level it gets. The Alpha 1 should by naming convention be the lowest level of them all, but they have packed everything but the kitchen sink and maybe the TV into this, even though it is named after a TV. And yes, before we get all excited, we might as well get this one out of the way first. You can buy two A1 TVs for the price of this. But perhaps one reason why this is so damn expensive is because this is a pro-grade camera. This has outproed the pro-grade A9. They're both full frame, they both share the same shape, same battery, incredible performance, but this seems to be able to do what the A9 does, and then some, what an A7R4 does, and most of the good stuff of the A7S3. So I guess if you're combining three alphas in one body, this is actually a bargain. For those used to Sony cameras, it's a familiar looking body. I mean, in some ways, I wish they didn't just keep raiding the same parts cabinets for new alphas. As good as the grip is, it's as good as the A7R4 or the A9 because it's practically the same shape. I just kind of expected this to be a bit more whoa for $6,500. At least make it out of titanium or gold or something. You know, personally, I would have thought that including a fat battery grip would have been good, but you know, that's extra with this. And it's exactly the same grip that you get for the A7R4 and the A9 II. And in many other ways, it's not too different to the A9 in terms of the body. The main differences are the card slots, like the A7S III, it takes the new CF Express A cards. The focus mode selector is a bit different too, it's got a little locking button here. It works fine, it's just that if you're in AFS mode and you've got fat thumbs, it might be a little bit difficult to unlock. And what else? The LCD screen is still 3 inch, 1.44 million dots. No, don't be silly, it's not a vlogging screen, it just does this kind of tilt and it's mostly fine. It works, I just would have thought that given that others have moved on to bigger than 3 inch screens with more than 2 million dots, it would have been nice to put something like that into a six and a half grand camera, right? What's more, the new menu system, this has the new menu system like the A7S III, could do with a bigger screen. It just looks a little bit claustrophobic because you've got menu and sub menu and it's a lot of information to cram into a three inch screen. But still, it's not all bad news because the EVF is amazing. Peer through that peephole and it feels like you've got a TV strapped to your eye. It's that big. It's got 0.9 times magnification, 9.44 million dots. The A9 has 3.6 million dots, 0.78 times magnification. This is big, it's bright, it's magnificent. And it kind of makes sense. When you've got all that resolution, why not have a final with tons of resolution too? And when you switch it over to the highest finder frame rate, it's ever so smooth. It's smoother than an oiled up dolphin. Talking about fast frame rates though, the Alpha 1 has taken continuous burst rates to stratospheric levels with an insane 30 fps burst rate. It's practically a video. I mean, check this out. That wasn't very smooth, was it? Get, just getting this video over the 10 minute mark. You know, I'm gonna give up. You get a point, right? <laughs> I do like the sound of the shutter, it's very dampened. But you can feel the vibrations every time it takes a shot, which is kind of worrying. If I put my face up to it, you can definitely feel it. And I don't remember it being like that with the A7S III. The only thing I'd worry about is. And that little vibration might affect your image. I don't know. I'll have to find out. It's got Bion's XR processor giving eight times faster performance. But to be honest, I don't care what it's called and what the calculations are. That is bonkers. That burst is at full frame, is electronic shutter, blackout free, and you'd hope it's blackout free because you might get an epileptic fit from all those flashing images being piped directly into your eyeballs. 
More interesting facts. Sony also mentioned that the Alpha One is capable of 120 calculations per second. I don't know why I'm supposed to do that information. Oh, let me look at the well-known camera calculation per second comparison table. No. As you heard just there with the electronic shutter, it comes with a pervert alert system as standard. Letting anyone around you know that you're taking a photo with an audible sound that would sound great on a drum machine. Not too cheesy, slightly angry, ever so apt for a camera with this burst rate. They mentioned that the rolling shutter is 1.5 times better than the A9 II, so there shouldn't be any noticeable jello in your action shots unless you're photographing jello wrestling. Jello, jelly, jelly, damn it. Then there's the anti flicker shooting, not the photo hosting website that nobody actually remembers. It's to stop tungsten lighting from pooping on your party. But then there's also variable shutter for reduced flickering for videos shot under LED and tungsten lighting. Okay, so here's the thing. I got this camera just, well, this afternoon, but when this video goes out tomorrow, which is today by the time you're watching this, I got it yesterday. I've just traveled time, sort of. Anyway, it's locked down, so you're not supposed to go out unless you need to get chocolate muffins, and I'm not gonna find anybody to do sporty stuff with such short notice, so I took photos of water. Be water, my friend. It's probably the second time I've tried water splash photography out, whatever it's called. I, I can't even remember what it's called. It requires flashlighting and good timing or special trigger device to set off the shutter when that droplet hits the water. Or you can try 30 FPS with high speed sync. Yes. For flash photography, the Alpha One has a fast sync speed of 400 of a second full frame or 500 of a second APS-C crop. That's mechanical shutter. With electronic shutter, that goes down to 200 of a second for full frame or 250 of a second for crop. But you do have the benefit of blackout free shooting with electronic shutter. Now, the only trouble is I don't have a flash. I have this roto light thing is under the table. Usually you use the flash to freeze the motion of the water, but I wanted something higher than the roto lights max of 2,500 a second. So instead I went for fast shutter speed on the camera and high speed sync. It needs a lot of light for that to work, but it is batshit bonkers when you're getting blasted by camera running at that high burst rate, 30 FPS, and seeing that light keeping up with it. With the fast shutter speeds and the electronic shutter and that burst rate, it really makes it easy to nail a shot that might otherwise take much longer with more trial and error. The image quality from the gapless design sensor is all right. Nah, not really, it's pretty damn good. With 50 megapixels, it's almost encroaching on the A7R 4 territory. And with a pixel shift multi-shooting, it'll take 16 images and combine it into a 199 megapixel image. Woof. Like a lot of new Sony products, they're keen to emphasize that this has the latest color reproduction accuracy, but it's got improved auto white balance. It's not like there have been many complaints about Sony colors recently, but improved auto white balance is very welcome. In terms of images, it's all good. For video, it comes as no surprise that they had to make sure they were not to be outdone. 8K. Oh yes, 8K. And yeah, I know there will be cries of, I don't need it. Oh, my computer's gonna melt. Yeah. I don't need 8K either, but it's still cool as hell. 8.7K oversample, 10-bit 420, not 422. Full frame, no pixel binning, 30p. It can also take proxy files with HD res that can be recorded at the same time. Yeah, that's fab, but the one thing everyone wants to know, how long can it record for? Well, longer than 20 minutes. If you're a more sensible person that just bought a $6,500 camera and want to shoot 4K, for full frame it understandably does a full pixel readout with binning. If you want 4K without pixel binning, you have to opt for A7 III or the A7S III. Still, the great thing is that you get 4K 120p 422 10-bit, plus interestingly, a Cinetone. I would have loved to have seen that in the A7S III, and I'm kind of surprised that they put this in the A1. Real-time AF is supposedly 30% improved. The AF is better overall, better human and animal AF. You've got bird AF too, which is new. I mean, I could have sworn that a bird is an animal, but now they have a dedicated AF mode for birds. Then there's area frame shift during tracking. I think that's what they call it, but it's getting to the point where I'm just listing shit that was in the presentation, but haven't had the time to try out or even film. So for now, I'm gonna leave it at that. This is the first look at the Alpha One. Looks like an Alpha 7, performs quite unlike any other camera.
Thank you so much for watching. And of course, this video was sponsored by the good peeps at Squarespace. If you want to start up your own website, online store, or just get yourself a domain, you should definitely check them out. It's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace, with an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service. You can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code.